Hey, Sierra and Brenna. Look at all this cool stuff we found in storage at the center. Yeah, we have pictures, official documents, and mementos from events that really made an impact within Wisconsin FFA. It kind of reminds me of our theme, small acts, big impact. Hey, guys, so what are you looking at? Hey, team. There's a lot of cool stuff that we found in the center. And all these great things have something that really mean a lot to Wisconsin FFA and agricultural education. Looking through all the stuff, it really reminds me what an anniversary year we have with Wisconsin FFA this year. Wait, anniversary year? What do you mean? Yeah, you remember the Smith Hughes Act? Here's a picture of Hoke Smith and Dudley Hughes. Um. Yeah, it is the 100 year anniversary of the Smith Hughes Act, 1917. We all remember studying that for a quiz bowl. That's when vocational agriculture really started within our schools. I wonder what it would be like if we didn't have the Smith Hughes Act. Hmm. I will be glad to answer that question. My name is Dudley Hughes. I helped write the Smith Hughes Act. So this is the 100th anniversary of it. So I'm here to tell you a little bit about the act and about the people behind the act. First of all, my name is Dudley Hughes. I am from Georgia. I am a farmer. The co-author of the act is a lawyer. I'm a farmer. I own 6,000 acres. I grew cotton and corn and fruit trees, peaches. I named my farm the Magnolia Plantation because up in the right-hand corner, you'll see a lot of magnolia trees in front of my house. I had three children. My daughter, Henrietta, if FFA and Ag Ed had been there then, she would have loved to have been in it. I gave her a pony one year for Christmas, and what did she do? She traded it in for a goat cart. I don't know about her. Well, in the area of Georgia that I grew up in, we were very isolated, so I went out and built a railroad. So everybody called me a railroad executive, but I just saw a need for a railroad, so I built the railroad. And then I was elected to the U.S. House of Representatives. I served for eight years in the House of Representatives, and I co-authored the Smith-Hughes Act along with Senator Smith. And this act provided money to support the teaching of agriculture in the public schools. And why was agriculture needed? The people were not farming very well. They had a lot to learn, and most of the school was boring and dismal, and you would study Latin and Greek, and you didn't study anything of any value to you. And here in the state of Wisconsin, you may be familiar with the Hordes Dairyman. In 1895, there was an editorial that says, education is as it was 60 years ago in our boyhood. So it is today in 99 out of 100 schools. Not a grain of progress that will help the country boy to a better understanding of the problem of agriculture. So agriculture was not being taught in schools. But our act changed that. So what if the Smith-Hughes Act had never passed? What would life be like without the Smith-Hughes Act? Well, first we would have farms that were less productive. The young boys enrolled in agriculture applied modern farming practices to their farm, and this improved their output. And a lot of students dropped out of school at 14. They were tired of this boring old stuff. But now because we had exciting topics like agriculture, they stayed in school. And also, students got exposed to agriculture and then they would go to college and study agriculture. And then, if the act had never been passed, we wouldn't need the FFA. So none of you would be sitting here tonight if the Smith-Hughes Act had not passed because that was responsible for having the federal leadership develop the FFA. There would be no state leadership for agricultural education. 
there would be no teacher education to train ag teachers. So what else would have happened? Well, a lot of ag teachers teach adult farmers how to farm better. So we wouldn't have that. Also, the act started home economics and trades and shop classes, so we wouldn't have that. And also, during World War II, we had to grow more food. And the ag students grew victory gardens, they collected scrap metal, they fixed farm machinery, so they actually helped win World War II. But the most important reason for the Smith-Hughes Act it sort of elevated the rural life. Rural life was pretty boring. Well, the students had farming projects, they had home improvement projects. But then the greatest reason is students' lives would not be changed. Thousands and thousands of students have had their life changed because of agricultural education and the FFA. Let me tell you a story about a young boy I know his name is Gary. He's on the right there with his mother. You will notice there's not a father in the picture because he ran off. Uh, there's three other boys, and they sort of lived in pretty poor conditions. And this young boy was, grew up in Texas, FFA and Ag Eds all over the nation. In the bottom picture, you'll see a white building in the center. What is that building? It's an outhouse. So this boy used that outhouse for a long time. Then he went off to school, and at school he didn't cause any problems. So because he didn't cause any problems, he was sort of invisible. He made pretty good grades. He wasn't a part of the in crowd, but he was just invisible in the crowd of students until something happened. And what happened? He enrolled in agricultural education. And if the Smith Hughes Act had ever exist, that would not have existed. And the ag teacher saw some potential in this young guy. And the ag teacher gave him an assignment. Learn the FFA creed. And if you do, you get this green hand pen. This little boy had never won anything in his life. So he memorized that FFA creed and got a pen. And in this particular FFA chapter, if you were the star green hand, you got a flock of sheep for a year, and you got to keep all the lambs. And then you could raise more sheep and earn money. And then he learned about FFA degrees other than the green hand. So he earned all those degrees. He participated in judging contests. He also was the FFA chapter president because he learned leadership skills in the FFA. And then he participated in public speaking competition. He went on exchange trips. And then he was able to go to college because he had earned money from his supervised ag experience program. And he also received some FFA scholarships. None of this would happen if it was not for the Smith-Hughes Act. So I would encourage you as you sit there, because I'm so old having written this act, that you need to take advantage of the opportunities that the FFA and agricultural education can afford you. Don't pass something over. No, enter that contest. Run for office. You will regret what you didn't do later. So basically, if we look at the Smith-Hughes Act, it contributed to improving American agriculture, but it changed the lives of countless individuals. And that's why I and Hoke Smith wrote the Smith-Hughes Act. Look, I found a picture of the father of the FFA. Oh yeah, Henry Grossclose. I remember him. Yeah, me too. I'm pretty sure he was born in 1892, and he lived most of his life in Virginia. He decided to become an agricultural educator and taught at the Polytechnic Institute there in Virginia. He, along with three other agricultural educators, decided to create a club for Virginia farm boys. They proposed that they create an environment for greater self-expression and leadership development. It was because of him that the Future Farmers of Virginia was born. Yeah, Henry Grossclose created the Future Farmers of Virginia. 
He wrote the Constitution and the bylaws, and I think it was in 1926, at an agricultural rally, the organization had a very positive effect on it. It was only two years later that the future farmers of Virginia became the future farmers of America. It was because of Henry Gross Close that we have such an amazing organization known as the FFA. Wow, so he really was like the father of the FFA. What, what the heck is this thing? Try to open it. Is this an old cassette tape? You think it works, Sarah? I don't know about that one. Try it. I believe in the future of agriculture with the faith born not of words, but of deeds, achievements won by the present and past generations of agriculturists in the promise of better days through better ways even as the better things we now enjoy have come to us from the struggles of former years. Caleb, that's the FFA Creed. The FFA Creed was written by E.M. Tiffany in 1930. It makes a pretty big impact on members today. It's only five paragraphs, but it's become a vital part of our organization. Did you know that E.M. Tiffany was the chief teacher in the Agricultural Education Department at the University of Wisconsin-Madison? You know, that's actually the reason the creed came about. He was creating an exhibit to show different programs of instruction and wanted a set of ideals that could describe FFA to others. And so, at the third National FFA Convention, the creed was adopted and now is a vital part of our organization. Ever since the FFA creed was written in 1930, it's impacted millions of FFA members across the nation. The words, I believe, give a new meaning to not only the members, but the whole organization. It's made a huge impact on the members' lives and gave them a direction and also given the organization a purpose. Hey, Carrie, what is this thing? It looks like an FFA jacket. It smells like an FFA jacket, but it is white. Oh, Danny, this is actually a chapter sweetheart jacket. So when females couldn't join the FFA, they could serve as honorary members. So they got to wear this white jacket instead of the blue one, and they were considered the chapter sweethearts. But actually, girls could join the FFA after a very important constitutional amendment at the 1969 National FFA Convention. That's very true. Did you know that we actually had three Wisconsin State FFA officers that served as our official delegates? Oh. And it's funny that we talk about that, because I actually have the jacket of Gordy Gash here, who was one of our national delegates. Hmm. Carrie, didn't you have so much fun when we got to serve as voting delegates at this last national FFA convention? Serving as a national delegate was an absolute blast. And we even got to make our impact on the national FFA by passing an amendment to change the opening ceremonies for the reporter position. But while that's a pretty cool thing, I often wonder how awesome it would be to be part of an amendment that's so big as allowing females into the FFA. Hmm. Good evening. I'm Gordy Gash, and in 1969, I served as the Wisconsin State FFA Secretary, and I was one of three delegates to the 1969 National FFA Convention. I'd like to tell you a few things what 1969 was like. First of all, there were no cell phones. Matter of fact, in my house, we lived, we had a party line. That's where five neighbors all used the same phone line. We each had different rings, so like when it was three short rings, that was our house. If it was two longs and a short, it was the neighbor's house. And you're right, the neighbors could listen in to what you were talking about. Computers weren't around. Matter of fact, the first computers were as big as a room and took a lot of uh, produced a lot of heat and required air conditioners to cool them. Our country was different. In 1969, the Seattle Pilots played for Seattle. You might say, what's that got to do with anything? But in 1970, they moved to Milwaukee. Gas was 35 cents a gallon. A brand new Chevy Impala cost $3,000. A ticket to a movie cost $1.40. In 1969 was a very tumultuous year. We were one year removed from the assassinations of Martin Luther King and Bobby Kennedy. 
1969, over 11,200 U.S. soldiers, many of them teenagers, died in Vietnam. High school was a lot different. There were no girls' sports. Girls played in what was called the Girls' Athletic Association, which was kind of an intramural league um, where the, you played just girls in your own school. Fayed was only, there was boys' Fayed and girls' Fayed, no co-ed. Many schools actually had rules that prohibited boys from taking home ec class and girls from taking ag class. Think of the difference now when that's required in many schools. In 1969, the state FFA convention was held in Green Lake at the Baptist Assembly Grounds. We actually stayed in, in, in cow barns that were remodeled as dormitories. But in 1969, there were some girls that were members of FFA. There were some that were members of local chapters in Wisconsin. At the national convention, the, the motion to allow girls to be members had been voted down at least two other times. And some of the, some of the pressure to elect, to, uh, to have girls were instigated because there were all kinds of laws passed in the 60s promoting equal rights. There were actually some states that threatened to, to pull out of national FFA if we didn't change our bylaws. Here's what I remember about that convention. The business session was on a Wednesday. The national president wrapped his gavel and said the business meeting will come to order. The first thing that happened was somebody jumped up and said, I move to adjourn the meeting. And we actually had a roll call vote on whether or not to adjourn the meeting basically before we started. Well, that failed, and the discussion of allowing girls to become members went on. I was surprised how vehemently some states argued against girls being members. In Wisconsin, we just thought it was time that girls were allowed in. It actually, I don't actually remember it being a big deal. And in fact, if you go online, in the 1969 um, proceedings of the National Convention are online, they're 88 pages long. There is one sentence that says this. It was moved by Bangkok from California, seconded by Craig of Michigan, and carried to amend Article 4, Section B by striking the word male. That's all it says. That I remember the vote, it was very close. It was 52 to 50. The next day, they tried to rescind the motion, or to rescind that vote, but that, def that was defeated 86 to 14. Like I said, at the time, it didn't seem important, but like your theme of your convention, Small acts can turn into big impacts. I think this vote in 1969 was the single most important decision that FFA has ever made. Thank you. Today, we are able to still see the impact of this small act as there are more girls than ever in the National FFA organization. Hey, Brenna, look at this. Sierra, it's an FFA alumni blazer. Hey, look at the emblem. You can see that there's a shield around the FFA emblem to signify how the FFA alumni is there to promote and support us. We learned it when we were putting together delegate testimony for national convention. I really couldn't even imagine FFA without the alumni. They have such an impact on us at the local, state, and even the national level. In fact, did you know that one of the Wisconsin FFA former members and advisors, Mr. Josh Rusk, yeah. is now our national FFA alumni executive director? That is so cool. The FFA alumni helps us to organize events, fundraise, and pay for trips to conferences and conventions just like this one. They really do make a huge difference on all of us. Hey, look what I found. You know, just this past year in August, Dr. Virgil Martinson passed away. He played a significant impact in Wisconsin agricultural education, FFA, and the FFA alumni. 
Dr. Martinson is remembered because of his passion for helping and supporting the FFA as the Wisconsin FFA Executive Secretary. Dr. Martinson served as an agricultural educator instructor for two years in Auburndale and 22 years in Marshfield before he worked for the Wisconsin Department of Public Instruction. With his caring personality and loving heart, he was able to transform the lives of FFA members by helping them become better leaders. Dr. Martinson really was instrumental in creating the Wisconsin FFA alumni. In 1972, just as the National FFA alumni was founded, Dr. Martinson provided the leadership that we needed in Wisconsin to help establish and develop Wisconsin FFA alumni into one of the largest alumni associations across the nation. He really had this great vision of how to keep FFA members involved and committed in the organization well after they hung up the blue jackets. So if all of these people helped to start agricultural education, FFA, and the FFA alumni, who was it that helped start the Wisconsin FFA Foundation? I know this one. I remember this from studying middle school quiz bowl. ABC, Arnold B. Cordes. You know, Mr. Cordes wanted to be a farmer, but he couldn't because of health issues. But he became an agriculture teacher. He was actually my grandparents' ag teacher at Eau Claire High School. Every summer, he would visit every single farm boy, and that small act of him visiting those farm boys encouraged them to be enrolled in an ag class and eventually join the FFA. Mr. Cordes served as the executive secretary of the Wisconsin FFA. And after he retired, he created the Wisconsin FFA Foundation. So today's Wisconsin FFA Foundation exists because of Arnold Cordes. Every plaque, pin, trophy, and award that an FFA member receives is donated to FFA by a sponsor due to the work that Arnold Cordes did. Because of his encouraging spirit, his love for agriculture, and his vision for the future of FFA, Arnold Cordes definitely made a big impact on today's FFA members. So many chapters and members have received awards, scholarships, funding, and grants from the Wisconsin FFA Foundation, all because people like Mr. Cordes believe in the future of agriculture. Hey, Travis, look at all these cool treasures that you guys have found. This is awesome. This stuff is amazing. There's so many things here that mean so much to Wisconsin FFA. It's like we opened up a time capsule. Well, Mrs. Zimmerman, where did we get this stuff from? Well, you know, we've collected all these things over all the years, and, and we've kept them because it's important to tell a story in the history of agricultural education in the FFA. And so, so we've collected it. And did you know something? Did you know that this is the 25th anniversary of the Wisconsin FFA Center? No. Yeah. You know, about 25 years ago, there were a lot of budget cuts that were going on, and, and the Department of Public Instruction, they were cutting some staff. And the ag teachers here in Wisconsin, the Wisconsin Association of Agricultural Educators, they put together a committee to create an FFA center so that we could be able to have staff to help FFA programs and activities continue. Matter of fact, look in this box. Look, here, there's a set of minutes, and, and there's the announcement about the new position that they created. You know, the first lady that was hired, her name was Melanie Burgess. She was the program coordinator for a year. Then I had the opportunity to get hired in 1993, that's 24 years ago, and I've had the opportunity to work with hundreds of FFA state officers and advisors, and, and you know, you think about, it was that group of ag teachers that created this committee, that that small act that they did had such a big impact on the future of Wisconsin FFA. And, that's how the Wisconsin FFA Center was created. That's crazy. Hey, let's go see what the rest of the state officers have found. All right, sounds good. Let's go. Guys, looking through all of this stuff really just makes me think back to all the memories that we've made this year. Yeah, look at all the things we still have in storage. We kept all the props and banners from all the workshops we did. You know, workshops were the greatest time getting to work and know with FFA members. Each and every one of these members truly has made an impact on all of our lives. And this past year, we were really able to see how a small act could really lead up to a big impact. For example, it's a lot like having that member have the small act of coming to convention, which would lead to a bigger impact on them in their own life. 
Hey guys, do you remember SLW and all the jackets down in Blueville? That was actually the first time that we really got to start working with members <laughs> and getting to know them better. I actually remember this middle school girl who came into my SAE workshop, and the first thing she said to me was, I absolutely hate being here. I would literally be anywhere else. And I was definitely a little bit concerned about why she felt that way about being there. So after our workshops was over and before Brenna started her speech, I decided to go and talk to her. And I started seeing with some FFA members. So I walked over and asked her, hey, how did it go tonight? And she told me, I love FFA. I've made so many friends here tonight. I can't wait to go home and be a difference in my chapter. It was because of the small acts of those members that made her feel welcome that she could create a big impact on her own FFA experience. Yeah, you know, every member really has made their own unique impact on each one of our lives. We've gotten to see them grow and develop and really step out of their comfort zone going to different conferences, like Fire Conference. Exactly. Take Katie, for example. Katie didn't know a lot about FFA, but her friend really wanted someone to come along to Fire Conference with her, so Katie tagged along. After learning about all the opportunities and history of FFA, Katie decided to go back to her chapter and be more involved. When I went back later for their banquet this year, I saw that Katie had run for a chapter office, and she's now instrumental in leading their chapter. That small act of attending a fire conference encouraged Katie to go back and make an impact on her own chapter. Hey, guys. Check this out. It's the banner from Halftime Conference. It says, I promise to live with purpose. And each member that attended halftime conference signed it. And their unique signature signifies that they promise to lead an impactful life. You know, this really has been an awesome year. And when you think about all the small acts that people make, it really made a big impact on our entire year. Wisconsin FFA members throughout the year have had small acts, but we can't forget about the small acts that their advisors have made throughout the year, too. When we were traveling for chapter visits, we were able to see what our Wisconsin agricultural educators are doing within every classroom, whether it be the hands-on learning experiences in the classroom or their diverse setup of supervised agriculture experiences, all the way to the stellar FFA programs. Our agricultural educa educators are ensuring that they're taking the small acts today to make a big impact for us in the future. One small act, it really can spark something. It can spark something in all of us, but also it can spark something in others. By doing something, we can lead by example and hope that someone else follows in our footsteps. And then another performs a small act, doubling your impact. And it inspires more and more people to join in, to help others, and to make the world a more positive place. When someone follows in our footsteps, creates a chain reaction. A chain reaction of small but purposeful acts that create a big impact. It's called the domino effect. One event happens, leading to the next, leading to the next. Just as these dominoes fall, hitting the next one over, it causes that chain reaction. There really is a lot of power in that, and we should use that power to make our communities, our chapters, and our worlds an even better place. Your small act could have been participating in today's day of service, participating in a workshop, smiling at an FFA member as you're walking through the hallways of convention, or even holding a door open for someone. No matter how small your act may seem, it will make a big impact. Only a few moments ago, we learned of so many people that have positively impact the Wisconsin FFA. And every day, we can strive to be like them to leave a lasting mark and leave a big impact. Who would have thought that 100 years ago, two men, Smith and Hughes, with their small act of legislation introducing agricultural education into schools could have made such a big impact? 
but it did. That piece of legislation was the first domino in the chain reaction of all the amazing highlights Wisconsin FFA has had. And now, it's our job. It's our job to continue the legacy, continue the impact, continue the chain reaction, and continue the domino effect. Just one small act has the potential to make a big impact. And the Smith Hughes Act started it all. Between 1939 and 1944, at the National FFA Convention, the president would call the meeting to order and then recognize a delegate from Georgia. The delegate from Georgia would come forward and produce a gavel made out of magnolia wood from the form of Dudley Hughes. This is one of those original gavels. And in recognition of the Wisconsin FFA recognizing the Smith Hughes Act, it is my pleasure as Dudley Hughes to present this act to your president, Brenna. This gavel. Thank you. You're welcome. We would like to officially welcome you to the 88th Wisconsin FFA Convention. We hope that you fully understand that each of the small acts that you make will make a big impact throughout your convention experience. Without each of you, we wouldn't have our domino effect. As a token to help us remember how important we are to Wisconsin FFA, as we exit the session hall, we will receive a domino. Keep that domino close to us so we recognize how important we are and how much our impact will make on others. Thank you for attending this evening's session. Amen.